In this video, I will talk about some of the most common operations in GIS, namely the buffer operation and that group of operations that is called the overlay operations. The overlay operations are so called because you can envision them as layers of features that you lay on top of each other and then compare their spatial relationship with some simple operators that can have intersections so we'll cover the operations in a moment so you can for instance take a layer of forest and a layer of fresh water extraction points and then you can ask how many of the fresh water extraction points are in the forest so that in general those operations that use information from two layers and combine them that is what we in general call early operations um, so let's uh, look at them in some detail so the first one i would call they are more or less random order is the intersection so the intersection tool takes two layers and then takes the common area and then make from that generates all unique combinations so in this case there are two objects here that and they have all the attributes from both the input layers okay. so important is that we have the common what the area what the, the two layers have and then you have all attributes from both layers and intersection can be used on both um, polygon to point polygon to line um, or polygon to polygon as in this example here so um, the next set which really is somewhat later to it is the union so the union creates or the uh, returns the area that is covered by any of the layers so in this case we will have areas that are covered by one layer and areas are covered by another layer so both or uh, so what, whatever layer something is covered by it will be included in the union again here it, they will have attributes from both layers that means that in some cases there will be filled in attributes from both layers in other cases if the area is only covered by one layer then only the attributes from one, that layer will be filled in. The, la the attributes from the other layer or layers will be null. Okay. So you can afterwards uh, relatively easily see which layer things come from because the layers that they are not has not been covered or does not cover the area, sorry, they will have null values in the attributes. So you will have, and uh, when you do a union, You'll have your two input layers, and the resulting will be whatever is for any, any of those two. Then there is something that might seem like an intersection, namely the clip tool. So the clip tool takes an input layer and a clip layer. So you could think of this as the two layers of the intersection. The only difference is that the output layer only contains the information from the input layer, not the clipping layer. So all attributes from the clipping layer, they are left out, and only those attributes that originate in the input layer are included in the output layer. So the difference between the clip and the intersect is that the intersect has all attribute combinations and has also generated all unique uh, combinations, spatially combinations. But importantly, it has all attributes from all layers, while the clip only has the attributes from the input layer. So often you are in a situation where you can use one or the other. And um, when doing analysis with GIS, 
most common problem is that you get lost in your data. So keep it simple and sweet. So um, get leave out those attributes you don't need. So if you do not need the information from both layers, but only from the one of the layers, then use a clip. If you do need the information from both layers, then you should use a intersect. The clip has a, let's say, an inverted function. So it does very much the same as the clip, but you can see that the difference is that that you can, if you see the clip as your um, your cookie cutter, then um, your clipping will result in the, the dough that is inside the cookie cutter, while the difference, or as it's called in um, RGS Pro, erase, will return the dough outside the cookie cutter. So the difference is, that clip that gives you what is common and the difference gives you what is the difference between the two layers. So what is not common. But again there, they are both the same, uh, that they only include the attributes from the input layer. So these are the basic four overlay operations and uh, of them you can do really a lot and in fact you can you can do all of these you don't need all of these four you can you can uh, use this uh, union and anything else can be generated from the union because you can then filter on the attributes but these four are basically the building block for really lots of GIS analysis and it's really important that you um, you get used to using them and understand how and when to use them. The last group I'll talk about is the buff. And oh, sorry, I don't talk about the buff yet because there is a. Um, I just talk some more about the relationship between these um, OLA operations and SQLs because they are both set based on set theory, if you wish. So you can see that the intersection is the same as doing an AND. And the union is, of course, the same as doing an all. Um, and the you can do a A, and then you can clip it with your, or you can do a B, and then clip it with your A. Um, so you can um, you can have that is the same as a doing a um, a a clip on it. And there's XOR that. Um, we haven't covered that how you do that, but um, that can also be done. If you look at this table up here, I try to um, put up some general rules because um, you'll see that in QGIS especially, much of the SQL and these things are done as what they call expressions, where you use a zero as meaning false and anything else than zero is true. So if we look at this concept, we can say that if we have that two sets A and B, they both are true, an and will return a true, and an or will return true. If uh, one of them is false, so the B is false, then the and is a false, and the or is true. If um, the opposite way around, again the or will be false, as so the or will be true, and the and will be false, and if they both are false, that both the AND and the OR will be false. If we look at this as numbers, so we put in a 1 for the true and a 0 for the false values, we can see that multiplying a 1 by 1 will return a 1, which is a true value, and adding them together will return a 2, which is also a true value. If we multiply a 1 with a 0, so we do an AND based on a true and a false, we get a 0, which is a false. While if we add them together, we get a 1, it is a true. So basically, if we look all the way through, you'll see that 
the multiplication function functions exactly as an AND, and the addition function functions exactly as an OR. So, especially in QGIS, there are quite a lot of these extract or select by expression, and there it uses this concept of one or basically anything else than zero being true and zero being false. So we have the basic, same basics for our ands and ors and our unions and intersect. This is just showing that you can see that the clip giving us this common will be, as I mentioned earlier, the same as the intersect with only having the attributes from the input layer. You can see here in QGIS, the icons for the two are, let's say, rather similar. And we have our difference. So one minus L. And we have uh, our systematic difference, which is what is called the XOR, um, where we can have what is the union, but without the intersection. So sometimes it's practical to use this systemat systematic uh, difference, but it is one of the more specialized ones. So basically, these are the OLA tools that you use. The last group of tools I'll be presenting here is the proximity or buffer tool. So it really does what it says on the box. If you have a point, it will make an area around that point where we have a distance set in the tool. So any area that it would, is within that distance would be part of this polygon. The buffer tool has a special one, a little operation that you can set on it that says dissolve. So instead of generating unique output objects, it generates one common output for all of the sorts. So, and buffer works on points, lines, and polygons, um, but much more about that in detail in a later video. So, this was basically just the overall discussion of proximity and overlay operations, and um, they are really important for you to um, to use. So, I can't emphasize enough that basically. 98 point something of all percent of your GIS operations can be done with these very few tools. But of course, the difficult part is putting them together and how to do problem solving with these. And that will be covered in another video.